Hi everyone, this episode of the Doing Your End podcast took place a couple weeks ago before a Maverick Pro Wrestling show, which took place in Los Angeles, California, with my guest, Tyler Bateman. I hope you enjoy it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get into the podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Doing Your Own Podcast, and today I have a very special guest, is Tyler Bateman. Hey, uh-huh. Um, so let's get started. Um, sure. Um, where are you from exactly? From, uh, I was born and raised in Oklahoma, originally, and I moved to California in 2007, so I've been in California for about 10 years. Were you a fan of wrestling growing up? Yeah, uh, honestly, I never remember a time where I don't remember wrestling, if that makes sense. Like, even my earliest memories, I already had, like, the, you will be far too young to remember the big, heavy LJN, uh, <laughs> they're like solid rubber, they were crazy, they were toys. You could use them as weapons, and oftentimes, if you had younger siblings, they were. But you, like, I had, those were some of the first toys that I remember. Like, I always remember wrestling in some way, you know? Who were you a, fa- a fan of? Um, uh, early on, uh, I liked big personalities and big colors. So it was a lot of Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage. Um, let's see. Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, I, li- I loved a Junkyard Dog for some reason. Uh, I'm exceptionally bright. I think it was the dancing. <laughs> The, the, the juke, the knee thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you, you see a lot of guys do. Rich Swan does it, what, and whatnot right now, like the knee thing that he does. Uh, and Sting too, I like. And Ultimate Warrior, like the, the bigger the, the bigger the spectacle and the brighter the colors. Yeah. Yeah. The Surfer Sting. Yeah, yeah. I liked Crow Sting too, but Surfer Sting was definitely the. The guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even when he had the rat tail. Right tail included. In the very beginning. Huh? Yep. Um, who was involved in your favorite match growing up? Oh, th- this will sound really weird, but when I was really young, I don't remember having a favorite match. Because while, while I liked wrestling, my parents were not such big fans, so it was almost like a secret mission to watch wrestling. Like, I could watch, I could watch wrestling, but only if nothing that they wanted to watch was on, and if they were doing something else, because they didn't even want to hear it. Uh, but like, and then I got a little older, and back in my day, because I'm very old, video rental was a thing. Uh, so I think my favorite match from the era when I was growing up is probably uh, Hogan and Warrior. Yeah, the the... I'm sure it had a name, but I just can't remember. I think it was just the whole game was Yeah, yeah that could have been it, yeah. Yeah, there was no big title chart. Yeah, but that one, I think, like looking back. How did you get started in wrestling? Uh, this is a very confusing chain of like I knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy sort of deal. Uh, I, I was always a fan, like as we have discussed. I was always a fan, but, uh, and I always told myself, like, uh, when, when I was, uh, when I was in my teens, like, when I first started training, I was still about my height, so I was about 6'2", six 6'3", six somewhere about there. So same height I am now, but I weighed about 130 pounds, 140 pounds. I was very, very thin. But I, and so I always just assumed I was way too small to wrestle. But I always told myself I could find a school I'd at least try it until they told me to go, go away, get out of here. Um, and a friend of, let's see if I can get, this chain is confusing every time I do it. One of my friends in high,
high school, his sister's boyfriend's friend knew a guy. Yeah, it's one of those where it's like you're trying to piece together the chain. Yeah. Knew, a, knew a guy who was a wrestler in a small place in Oklahoma. So eventually I got a phone number through him, and then I made a call, and then I went to that school. And uh, the guy who ran the school was, uh, his name was Tom Jones, not the singer. He was an old, uh, he was a territory guy that uh, did a lot of enhancement work. He worked all over the place, and he passed away earlier this year, and that was a sad thing. But he's, he's the one who helped me. He, he's the one who ran the school that I got my start at. And then a lot of the guys at the school helped me out from there. Um, who has been your favorite opponent? Ooh, uh, this is also a good question. Uh, fa favorite, hmm. maybe. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, if you smell wood burning, that's my thought process. It takes a lot to get going up there. Uh, maybe. We've had, we fought a lot. All, all, he might be the person I fought the most. B-Boy. I enjoy the matches because uh, they're very physical and they're challenging. Um, and at least out here, since I moved out here, he's definitely probably the one that most people would recognize. And a few other guys from back in Oklahoma that I uh, wrestled a lot that I really enjoyed. I think my favorite match that he and I have had was probably the one uh, that was that we did for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood this past December. I think it did it air in December. I know we filmed it in December. It may have aired in January, but that one. Is. So, is the match that you had with B Boy your favorite match, or do you have um, another favorite match? A favorite match that I've been in? Yeah, that's your favorite. Ooh, uh. Honestly, right now, it, it's either that one or several years ago at AWS, I had a match with Famous B that I've never seen since it happened, but it felt really good, if that makes any sense. Like, everything, uh, once again, it was, it was physical, like everything, the, the people were into it, little things, got big reactions, which is a good thing. So I'd say right now it's probably one of those two. I think so. Probably one of those two. Okay. Uh, besides Maverick Pro Wrestling, do you have any um, upcoming wrestling shows? Uh, tomorrow I'm in the Red Carpet Rumble for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. There are, I believe, there are 30 entrants. And I'm entering at number one. Yeah. yeah. I lost a match a few weeks ago. And the winner got to come in at number 30. The loser... Got to come in at number Yeah, it had to come in at number one. And if I win, that's great. But I need to make it at least to number 30. Because number 30 is Oliver Grimsley. And he's the reason I had to come in at number one. He also set my face on fire a few weeks ago. Uh, not weeks, several months ago. Yeah, so uh, he and I have a bit of an issue to resolve. Um, do you happen to know who's coming in at number two? Uh, no, but I wouldn't want to be them. The, the, the cleaner I can keep the ring until number 30, the more of a chance I'll have to breathe. So. I hope you win. Me too. That, that makes two of us. I at least need to make it to 30. And then yeah. Winning would also be a, a bonus. Because if you win the red carpet rumble... Shot at the uh, heritage right. title. Okay. Professional Peter Wright. Professional Peter right now, but he has uh, bad dude Tito oh, cool. too. So everything could change. Yeah, Ooh. everything could change. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to that match. It'll be a good one. Um. So um, one more thing. Yeah. Is there any way um like people can follow you on any social medias? Uh, yeah, I have a fan page on Facebook that if you, I think you just have to, I'm really bad at my social media. Uh, it's hard for me uh, too. <laughs> I think my Facebook, the fan page is Tyler Bateman. If you just enter in Tyler Bateman, you should be able to find it. And my Instagram and Twitter are the same. It's uh, at and then GDN.
GM, Tyler Bateman. Uh, thank Those you. Those are the easiest ways to find me. Thank you for being on my podcast today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>